Ladies and gentlemen, Raila Amolo Odinga is a political genius. The only thing he has always failed to win is the presidency. But it's difficult to defeat Raila Amolo Odinga in any political contest. A few days to William Ruto's visit to Nyanza, Raila Amolo Odinga called a meeting with his troops from the region, the elected leaders. And on the table was how they were going to deal with William Ruto's visit to the region. Because William Ruto had actually visited uh, Homer Bay earlier, the leadership, elected leadership, boycotted. And it backfired. So they made an agreement that this time around, because the visit was going to be official, all elected leaders were going to join William Samoy Arab Ruto during the trip. And not only to join him, but also to show love and to mobilize. So when William Ruto landed in Homabi, he was received well. When he landed in Kisumu, the governor for Kisumu, Professor Anyang Nyongo, was ready to receive him alongside the member of parliament. When he landed in uh, Siaya, James Orengo was on the ground to receive him. A few days before this particular visit, the Luo rebels had actually tried to own the process. They had embarked on distribution of uh, Unga and attacking ODM and the elected leadership. So when William Ruto then finally arrived, he began his journey of the east of the region. By the end of that tour, Okoto Bado could not even see where the microphone was. Evans Kidero could not even join the elected leaders meeting. Miguna Miguna could only dance very far away around Walos home. And I was reading uh, some piece of an uh, article which, which appeared in um, one of the newspapers. Let me just get it because I don't want to do a lot of editing. Let me just see it. Okay. There is this thing which is talk of the town. Loyal former MPs ejected that three former MPs were unceremoniously kicked out of a closed door meeting that President Ruto had with the leaders from Homer Bay County during his visit. So embarrassing was the unceremonial exit that one of the former lawmakers who arrived early at Tomboy University, where the meeting took place, took place and took and had took his preferred sitting place, waiting for the arrival of the president, was removed from the venue as the meeting was strictly for elected leaders. The other one was told by the police that he was not allowed anywhere near the president. One of those kicked out has lately been throwing barbs at ODM leader. Our snitch described the scene as embarrassing. Now that is what is captured in that particular story. By the end of William Ruto's visit, the rebels who had hoped to take charge of this program went home with eggs on their face. But how did Raila Odinga manage to lock them out? By the way, in case you're watching this video for the first time or this channel for the first time, please take a second, press that subscribe button. And to those who have already subscribed, I want to ask you for this particular video, just press thumbs up button. That's the best way you can support the channel. Now let us look at, at politics from the face value, what really transpired. Number one, when William Ruto arrived, because of the presence of these elected leaders, he stuck to protocol. And the protocol, presidential protocol, is always very clear that when he lands, the person who is going to take charge of the program is this person going to give the elected member of parliament who is going to give it to, this, to the women rep 
then to the senator who is going to introduce other leaders, then the governor who invites the deputy president if he's there, and then the deputy president hands the program over to the president. So Ruto had to stick to that protocol because of the presence of elected leaders. For example, today William Ruto was in Bomet, and, in, and uh, Nick Salat, who is, not, uh, who is not elected leader, was allowed to speak. Why? Because that was a political event. So by joining this particular meeting, it meant that Ruto had to stick to the program. For example, there was no way in uh, Homabe town, or in, in Homabe, for example, Ruto was going to allow Kidero to speak. And at the same time, deny Gladys Wanga. And if you were to allow the three MPs, who former MPs, who were kicked out to speak, or to sit in that meeting, then it would have also meant that the, the, the current members of parliament who are also present were going to be absent. I mean, were going to be denied the chance. So it meant Ruto had to stick to presidential protocol. And that's how you saw Obado just being called as a former member or as a former governor to wave. Ranguma, former governor. Kidero, former governor for Nairobi, wave. Neto, they were. Because that was Raila Odinga strategy. Again, number two, the presence of elected leaders there also saved Raila Amul Odinga from attacks. Those who had planned to attack Raila Odinga could not because the elected leaders were there. So for example, even if Ruto allowed these former members of parliament governors to speak, the protocol would have been let the former members of parliament speak, then current members of parliament. So the current members of parliament were going to respond to them. Then you allow former governors of Badu and the rest to speak, they were going to speak. Then the current governors were going to speak to respond. And just like that, because of their presence, nobody attacked Raila Odinga. If, for example, Gladys Wanga was absent, what do you think would have stopped state house operatives from allowing Kidero to take charge of the program? Look at CIA. Orengo took charge of the program. Who was Orengo's opponent? Gumbo. He was not allowed to speak. The president was even in his constituency. <laughs> so they could not attack Raila. So which means for the two days, the only thing we had was presence of Raila Amorodinga. And because of the, their presence also, it meant there was even the perception that some of them came with their supporters. For example, in Homer Bay, as a governor, Gladys mobilized her supporters, who are predominantly Raila Odinga supporters. You come to Kisumu, you go to Homa, to Siaya, Rengo presence there, members of parliament present there, just meant the same. The other thing which is also significant is that through these strategies, the crowd which turned up were then turned into Raila Odinga's crowd or Azimio crowd. If, for example, Ruto came and he was received well in Homa Bay, and CIA like that. And these members of parliament, these governors boycotted. Then it would have meant that the locals actually boy, the, the locals actually defied their leaders and attended William Ruto's event. And because now they attended, nobody could take credit away from the fact that these guys gave Ruto 1%, but they still turned up in large number to re, numbers to receive him. So basically, Raila Odinga also managed to turn the crowd, despite of whoever mobilized them, whether it was the chiefs, the assistant chiefs, Wallo, the rebels, whoever mobilized them. At the end of the day, even when Rigadi was talking, he was referring them to Watu Waba or Baba. And number four, if you look at the whole thing, <laughs> Raila Odinga successfully managed to take away the limelight from these former members of, I mean, from these rebels. Because they had begun something here which was gaining traction. 
you know, they started going to places. Some of them were even courageous now to start abusing Raila Odinga. Some of them had even become so bold to start attacking even the governors, you know, because they felt now Ruto is in power, was going to protect them, you know. The fact that these guys were never allowed to speak. Some of them are embarrassed up to now. In fact, someone was telling me that a former governor saw never to attend any William Ruto's event again in Nyanza because they were embarrassed. If you look at it again, that strategy also made Ruto to make a choice. It made Ruto to make a choice. A choice of even of going, choosing between the elected, the rebels, or working with the elected who are pro Rai Lulinga. And if you look at the political currency, it would have been foolish, for example, for Ruto to choose to work with the rebels. Because some of these rebels, they have consistently rebelled. They've consistently promised someone like Ogindo has always promised Ruto to deliver Homa Bay town to him. He promised to Huru that time that he was going to deliver nothing. People like Ranguma campaigned for Ruto here. Promised to, uh, to, to deliver zero. So Ruto had to make that choice. That the best strategy is to tone down, work with these elected leaders. Maybe, maybe in the future, their supporters can see that I've done something and therefore support me. And lastly, the event was successful, which simply means who takes the credit? Do you credit the success of this event to Ruto? Do you, do you attribute the success of William Ruto's visit to Nyanza to Owalo? Do you attribute it to Rayo Molo? The only person who takes credit for that is the elected leaders from Nyanza because they are now viewed as people who welcomed Ruto. The people who take credit in general are the people of Nyanza because they turned up in large numbers. The people who take credit, in my view, is none other than Raila Amolo Dinga. I don't know what you think. That's my take. Thank you. Just by a stroke, Raila Dinga managed to lock these Lugori Bells from William Ruto's visit without any single drop of sweat. Bye-bye.